Today, we're talking about how to get better quality video when teaching online and what you need to know when looking to upgrade your camera. Hey dancers, welcome to Dance Tech with Jay Su, the channel where dancers become more proficient and efficient in the digital space. By now, I'm sure you've been in hundreds of Zoom calls, Google Meet classes, WebEx meetings, and now that everyone is used to seeing people online, having good video is that much more important. There's always that one person in the meeting whose video is too dark, or super grainy or blurry, and I want to make sure that person isn't you, especially if you're the teacher. Like I've said before, if you're a studio or a teacher, having a clean video and audio feed in your class is a great way to stand out from the competition and it makes it easier for students to stay focused. Before we start, if you haven't seen part one of this video series yet where I talk all about lighting for your live stream class, make sure you check it out by clicking on the card up above. This video is geared toward dancers and dance teachers who are currently using their laptop and want to improve the quality of their video. So I'm not going to go into all the technical jargon that we would want to go into for dance film. I'm going to just tell you what settings you should use, what you should look for, that's it. If you're currently using a mobile device or tablet, then chances are your video quality is actually pretty decent. But stick around because I'm going to show you how to use your phone or tablet as your laptop webcam. I want to stress that everyone's situation is going to be different. So your needs are going to be different from mine and even the studio next door. So before you go and buy everything I'm going to tell you about, figure out what your priorities are. What's your budget? Do you need something that you can take down easily and transport between rooms? Is the video you have right now good enough? Do you have someone on staff who would be able to troubleshoot things, etc. Also, there will be time codes for everything in the description because I think this is going to be a long video again. When it comes to upgrading your webcam, there are four things I would consider as a dance teacher. Field of view, video quality, manual control, and autofocus. Field of view. Field of view is how wide your camera lens is. Everyone's needs will be different depending on the size of your space, but generally we want a wider field of view so students can see your entire body. If your only concern is getting a wider field of view and video quality is not a concern, then check out the video I made about using a wide angle lens for cell phones on your laptop. If you're looking to buy a better webcam or even a DSLR or mirrorless camera, here's what you should know. Webcams use field of view in degrees when telling you how wide the field of view is. The bigger the number, the wider the view. However, I wouldn't go above 120 or 130 degrees. Anything above that starts to look like a fisheye lens. Here's a quick comparison. This is a Logitech C270 that I use at my desktop computer for Zoom calls and has a 60 degree field of view. This is my laptop webcam with a 120 degree wide angle lens on it. This is an action camera by Crosstor that you can plug directly into your computer and use as a webcam and has a 170 degree field of view. Now I will say the action camera is pretty nice because I could get this when all the webcams were still sold out and it's only $30. So if the fish eye look doesn't bother you, maybe check it out. There are also other webcams in between this range like the webcam from Speedle that has a 120 field of view and while I haven't personally tried this webcam, I recommended it to a colleague and they said they were happy with it. If you're looking to buy a camera to use as a webcam, your field of view is measured in millimeters and the smaller the number, the wider the angle. First, when you're looking at cameras, see if you're able to take the lens off or not. If not, then you want to make sure the widest field of view is enough for you. If you're able to take the lens off, then you'll probably need to purchase a lens separately, in which case, make sure that lens is wide enough. Oh my goodness, there are so many tangents that I could go off on about this, but basically for cameras, I would recommend staying in the 10 to 16 millimeter range, depending on the camera when it comes to teaching. As an example, here's my Canon 5D Mark IV at 16 millimeters compared to the 120 degree wide angle lens on my laptop. And real quick, if you're debating whether you should buy a webcam or invest in a camera, here's a quick breakdown. Cameras will always have better video quality than any webcam you can buy, and you'll have manual control over your exposure, which I believe some webcams have, but not all. Also, cameras will always be more expensive, and depending on the camera, you might need to buy a separate wide angle lens and another piece of equipment like a capture card to make it work as your webcam. You'll need a tripod of some sort, and you'll need to be mindful of battery life and how long you'll be teaching. 
although there is a solution for this that I will talk about later on. If you think you'll be using the camera to also film your students for future projects, or take pictures, or you'll use it for your own personal use when you travel, then maybe a camera is the right choice for you. If you're just going to be using it for teaching, then I would recommend using your phone, buy a webcam, or a wide-angle lens for your laptop. Video quality. 720p, 1080p, 4K, what do you need? These numbers refer to the resolution of the camera's video quality, and the higher the number, the higher the resolution. First, don't worry about 4K. For live streaming a class, I personally think that's overkill and it's going to be a lot more expensive. Plus, do you really want your students to see every single pore as you are sweating and teaching? 1080p, or what we call HD, is great. But honestly, even 720p is probably enough. If you're debating between two cameras and one is 720 and the other is 1080, then I would go with the 1080 camera. However, keep in mind the higher resolution will also take up more bandwidth on your internet connection. So, if your internet isn't as good, maybe go with 720. Also, a lot of live stream events are done at 720, so for teaching online, that's totally fine. Manual control. Manual control is probably the biggest reason I would pick a camera over a webcam. With webcams, you usually have to let the camera decide what the proper exposure is supposed to be, and sometimes that's not what you want. With cameras, you can set the shutter speed, ISO, and aperture to make sure your exposure doesn't change unless you want it to. I'm not going to go into what each of these settings does, but if you're using a camera, here are the settings I would recommend. Auto white balance, shoot at 24 frames per second. If you're in Europe, then 25 frames per second. One over 50th of a shutter speed. Your aperture should be as low as possible, meaning the smallest number. Your ISO should be as low as possible while making sure the image is as bright as you want. The higher the number, the brighter the image. Every camera layout is different, so don't ask me in the comments how to find these settings on your camera. If you Google it or YouTube it, I guarantee you will find a video showing you how to do all of that. And while we're talking about camera settings, make sure you turn off your camera's auto power off. Autofocus. If you're getting a webcam, don't even worry about this. But if you're buying a camera, some older models don't have tracking autofocus for video, so just be aware of that. If the camera came out after 2015-ish, then it should be fine. Okay, so you've looked at your budget, you've figured out what your needs are, and you've decided to either get a wide-angle lens for your laptop or a webcam. But wait, before you hit that buy button, try using your cell phone as a webcam first to see if that's enough. Now, if you use your phone to play music during class, then obviously don't use your phone as your webcam. But if it's just sitting there, try this. I'm going to cheat a little bit and just direct you to pal to text videos on how to do this for both Android and iPhones because A, I don't feel like going through all the steps here. B, he does a great job breaking everything down. C, this way it's fair to both Androids and iPhones. D, I've been having issues with my phone cable so I can't connect my phone to my computer at the moment. And E, I don't feel like going through all the steps on here. A quick disclaimer, I've never used my phone as my webcam when teaching because I play music from my phone and because my charging cable is having issues, so I've never successfully done this method. But both Android and iPhones have a free version or a very cheap paid version, and if it works, great, you'll have saved hundreds of dollars. If you've decided to buy a camera and now you need to figure out how to connect it to your computer, let's go. First, since the pandemic hit, a lot of camera companies have come out with software that lets you use their cameras directly as webcams without needing third-party equipment like capture cards. As of this recording, I know Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fuji, and GoPro have come out with some iteration of this software. However, some only work with their newer cameras, some are technically still in beta, so make sure you check to see if your camera is supported before you buy it, if this is important to you. I have a Canon camera, so I'll show you how it works with the Canon 80D. All right, everyone, let's download this software. So you're gonna look up Canon Utility Software and go to their website. And now here, as you can see, Windows is officially released. Mac is still technically a beta, but even when Windows was a beta, it was working pretty well for most people. They have a lot of resources here. These are all the different places that you could use their program with. And down here is a list of all the cameras that are currently supported. And just make sure you keep track of these asterisks. Uh, then they tell you what you need or what those mean down here. So, for example, me, I have an 80D, so I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to download the correct driver. So I'm going to look for Webcam Utility 1.0 Windows and select. I'm going to put my information in. I've, I've done this part. 
then you're going to hit the download button and open up the zip file, extract it. And I've, already, and I've already done this part, but you're just going to hit setup and it'll take you through the steps. Very easy, very simple. Once that is done, I'm going to open up a Zoom call. And you'll see here there's EOS Webcam Utility, but there's no camera selected yet. So let's fix that. I have my Canon 80D right here. Now this is a different cable. It's the data cable that you would like connect your that you would use to connect your camera to the computer to download files off. It's not the uh, mini HDMI. This is a I think micro USB. Connect that to the computer. I'm going to plug it in. USB. And now all I need to do is turn the camera on. thinking and look there you go voila we are good to go and you'll notice it's a clean signal so you don't have to worry about all the uh, settings and other things showing up on your feed look at that look at that beautiful and it is that easy if I turn the camera off boom it goes away and if you ever needed to change your camera source you can go here and you could change it to something else if you wanted to Alright, that's it. If your camera is not supported by any of these programs, don't worry, there's still a solution. Before the pandemic and all these companies scrambled to put out these webcam softwares, you had to use a video capture card to turn your camera signal into something your computer could read. This lets you use any camera or camcorder as long as you have the right cable. Basically, all you need to do is connect your camera to the capture card, capture card connects your computer, and it will show up as a camera source in whatever web conference platform you're using. Two things to keep in mind when buying a capture card. I know this video is getting real technical, I'm sorry. One, because every camera manufacturer and camera model is different, you'll probably need to buy a separate cable apart from the capture card. It's probably going to be a micro HDMI to HDMI cable or mini HDMI to HDMI cable. And you can tell the difference because the shapes are slightly different. Two, when using a camera with a capture card, there's something called clean HDMI out. That means when you're using the camera, you don't see all the settings that show up on the camera screen. If your camera does not support a clean HDMI signal, then you'll have all the settings on your screen like this, which is cool for some learning instances, but not for dance class. You can turn some of them off, but it's kind of annoying. And every camera is different, so the best way to find out if your camera supports a clean signal is to Google, does my camera model have clean HDMI out? The most popular capture card is probably the Elgato Camlink. When stay at home orders started, this thing flew off the shelves. I wasn't able to get my hands on one, but I'm bringing this up because on Amazon, there was a lot of price gouging where people were selling them for twice the normal price. It's calmed down by now, I think, but when you're looking at capture cards, I would always recommend going to Best Buy's website or B&H to see what their price is for the same product to make sure you aren't getting ripped off on Amazon or just buy it from Best Buy or B&H. The next one is this cheap $15 capture card. I've heard really good reviews on it and how easy it is to use, but the one I got off eBay worked twice and then overheated and now nothing shows up. But hey, it's $15, so if it works, great. If it doesn't work, not a huge deal. The next capture card that I've personally used is by MyPin and was $100. I love this one. It's so easy to use. Literally, one end I connect my camera with a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, and the other end is a USB 3.0 cable. I turn my camera on, and in zoom, select the My Pin as my camera source. The last capture card I've personally used is the Elgato HD60S, which was $180. I purchased this one because I read it had zero latency, meaning no lag time between the camera capturing the image and it showing up on the computer. However, between the Elgato and MyPin, I honestly couldn't really see a difference, so I would recommend getting the MyPin if you're deciding between these two capture cards. The one plus side to the Elgato is you have to download their game capture software first, which is not as easy, but within that software, you can adjust the brightness and contrast of the image, and I will admit it's very sharp and fast.
But for teaching, I don't think you need to spend an extra $80 compared to the MyPin. Two more accessories you might need if you're using a camera is a tripod and what we call a dummy battery. Tripods, I feel like, are self-explanatory. You need something to hold the camera. For teaching, you can use a cheap tripod and you'll be fine. However, if you can, I would recommend get a tripod with a video head and not a ball head. It's much easier to make sure your camera is level with a video head. The other accessory is a dummy battery. This lets you plug your camera into an outlet so you don't have to worry about battery life. Some cameras have this, other cameras don't. Again, the easiest way would be to Google your camera model and dummy battery. Okay, that was a lot, so everyone pause, take a deep breath in, let it out, and prepare yourselves because we're about to dive in even further. Just kidding, that's the end of this video. <laughs> but before I end, I do want to stress, you need to figure out what works best with your budget and what your needs are. For example, when I go into the studio to teach, I'll bring my mixer and my microphone, but I'll just use my laptop webcam with a wide angle lens because I don't feel like bringing my tripod and camera and capture card with me. When I teach at home for workshops or I have a Zoom call where I need to look more professional, I'll break out the capture card and lights. That's it for this video, everyone. I hope you found it helpful. I know that was a lot of information. Make sure you check out part one where I talked about lighting for online classes. Also, I am so close to 500 subscribers, so thank you to everyone for your support. And I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks in advance, and I'll see you next time. Five, six, seven, eight.